In 1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Bucky Dunn. The Yankees now lead it by a score of 3-2. to Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Long hits it to deep left. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. Veritek and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. Masada's throw. Roberts, safe. What can I say? Just dip my heart and... and... Call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. Brian Shackman here, John Senecal, our good friend Matt Soroy is usually the on the producer side, but he's a huge Yankee fan, so we we thought it would be good to have his perspective. I mean, I'm sort of done with this Aaron Judge 62 talk, so you guys have to tell me why. I mean, listen, it happened. It's great. He got 62. <laughs> like, let's move let's on. Let's get on if Bogarts is going to yeah. opt out, right? No, I mean, I, <laughs> let's, I guess. Let's move along. I guess I got <laughs> Nothing to see here. I, I feel like, listen, I rec- I actually recognize it as the home run leader, although I don't know what to do with the, the, the Maguire and Sosa seasons and that one season by, by Bonds that he gets 73. But he's the MVP. He had one of the best seasons in history, and he, he, he made history. It just toward the end, it just dragged on. You, for said, me. you just said he's the MVP? Yeah, he'll win it. Oh my God, that's a whole other conversation. But I don't think he's, I can't believe we got to mark that one. I know, but I, don't, I thought that was going to be a whole other debate with you. No, Brian. I don't think he's the best player in baseball. But that's the whole other debate, right? Is that is that the award? Should the award be called that? But let's get back to Aaron Judge, though. Okay. All right. I think. Don't like, you in, lecture me? Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. Right. I think what he did was pretty spectacular, given the fact that the noose was getting kind of tight. It was yeah. getting real tight. Hundred percent. It was getting down to the wire there, and I thought that. There's a real possibility that it wasn't going to get done. That guy grooved him one. He's like, put me on your Christmas <laughs> I, list. I don't know. I mean, you're like at the Dave Portnoy school. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm the unbiased person on the. By the way, internet. I do, I I have grown to to like a Dave Portnoy take here and there. But what I would say is, I listen. He hit hit the ball out of the park. I'm just kidding on that one. But but that 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 hit though, right? At, for a moment, I almost didn't think it was going to go out because the outfielder got back there and did the kind of like the little slap on the. And right. like right when he hit it, I was like, "It's going out." And then I was like, "Got up and was high. It was it was really high, you know." And I'm like, "Oh, maybe it's not going to go out." And then like, you know, but right. in all seriousness, the question I really have is, how do we frame this in historical perspective? Because the guy who caught the ball, they say he was offered two million. If I was that guy and someone offered you two million, I'd take it now because I think that ball is not worth a tenth of that. Really? I don't. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think that someday that ball will sell for three, four, or five million. I don't. I do not. So I don't think there's any appreciative value. So if you can get it, so how do you? But is I, that given the fact that the person that supposedly what was it two million they paid for McGuire's home run? Three, three million. Three million. Is now that, that's worthless. But that was pre pre st- still called steroid emission, right? Correct. Um, so that's basically worthless. But you go on the fact that Judge wouldn't be a steroid guy, and that it, or is that the, no one will break it. But the thing is, that's my but, point. But is but where let's, does let's it go fall? Back to, no, I don't think anyone's going to break that. Look at how hard that is. And, and, and if he did it clean, just look at the, the variation in the numbers right but there. But it's still not the record according to the books. So unless that other one's off the books, that's never going to happen. No, it's that's not. never going to happen. It's 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 good. this is going to be one of those baseball debates until they put all of them in the Hall of Fame and label them somehow. Well, then that until, makes this ball worth even less. I think it makes it even more, honestly, because it, that they said that a 60-second homer would be worth something, and then if he hit another one or the last one, that one would be worth even more. And right. because this is this is the only one, it could be worth, you know, two and a half to three. Yeah, it's the breaker. It's the breaker and the record. I don't. But I guess my point is, that it's not. It broke the American League record. It broke Roger Maris, but it doesn't break the Major League record. So I don't think it. Unless you take those records off the books, I don't think it matters as much. Yeah, well, I mean, all along everybody's been talking about it just being the American League record because a lot of people just don't want to keep treading in the waters. It's just, just a stupid. It's just I'm just tired of the conversation. Right, but the, I just think he needs to hit 74. Well, maybe he can come back to the Yankees that's and do all, that. That's all. I mean, if he does that, then I'm good, and then this ball will be worth even less. Uh, well, what I feel, like, what I, what I think that's pretty amazing about what Judge did, though, is think about this. I was reading this the other day. The amount of pitchers that he faced compared to what uh, Maris faced and right. what Ruth faced. Like, Judge faced, like, 250 different pitchers. Maris was, like, 110, and Ruth was, like, 60-something, 60 65, right? Now, you can say that there's advanced metrics and all that now, but when you're facing a player 67 times, right, and you and – you, it's like Little League, right? Yeah. Like, you got you, you know what know that him. guy's got in his back pocket regardless of the metrics. you got to feel for that guy, right? You have a feel for that guy. So I feel like it's easier for you to get the one up. Now, it might be easier for the pitcher too, but I almost, I almost feel like the, the batter's got the little bit of upper hand a lot of times anyways. 
And but by me. facing the same pitcher multiple times, right. it's good for the hitter. So yeah. this makes it harder that's, for that's Judge. That's what I think. You know, get, yeah, the scouting report is, is is there. I mean, they had they must have had scouting reports back then too, and, and known. I mean, just knowing alone when you face that guy six, seven, eight times, you know. So uh, or what, or you're facing him like three times four over four days. Yeah. You know, right. the same guy, and his, his arms dragging. Like so, th- then you get into the whole live ball, dead ball era, the old, the new, and you know, the modern era, the old era. It's. I do think it's really an interesting point that I hadn't considered too much or heard about. That if you're getting the same guy in the seventh inning as opposed to a fresh arm throwing a hundred, I mean, that does make a difference over time. And I we think haven't even got to the walks part yet. I mean, back in the day, like look at how many times Roger Maris walked. He had Mickey Mantle batting behind him that year. Like he didn't walk at all. Nobody wanted to pitch to a switch. Mantle was sitting behind you, and look who had Judge. Excuse me, look who Judge had hitting behind him. Stanton. Yeah. Well, yeah, part of the season, right? He had a hodgepodge of crap basically from the from the All Star break on, batting behind him. So I I, I did this on the show, uh, my regular show on WTIC AM. I, I was fascinated by the you know somebody said you know Ruth did it in X amount of games. So on and so forth. If Ruth had more games, he X would have more games, homes. Right. But so I looked at Ruth's season uh, in 27 when he hit 60. He had 151 games. And to me, like, it's not about at bats because then you take out the walk. It's about plate appearances, right? So it, Ruth had 691 plate appearances. And this year, Judge had 157 games, right? So six more games, but had 696 plate appearances. So he only had five more plate appearances. And then if you compare to Maris, who had 161 games, who played more than all of them, he had 698 plate appearances. And then if you go back to Bonds in 01, he had 153 games when he hit 73 home runs, and he had only 664 plate appearances. And that's plate appearances, so that includes walks. Correct. Wow. Yeah, Bonds was either a home run or a walk. Well, you, I remember that season out, like, clear as a bell. It was like literally he had one pitch, if he was lucky, a game to hit, and he hit it out. Yeah. It was crazy. But looking back, what struck me is that Bonds didn't have any other seasons over 50 home runs. No. No. So, I mean, that right alone just shows you how dirty it was. Yeah, it's like Brady Anderson. I mean, it's terrible. Brady Anderson. Can you believe, can you believe that guy went on to be the, like the health coach for the Orioles? I don't even know what he is. is he was. He, he really? was. He was. He was like the health guru for the Orioles. Yeah, it was over an oxymoron. Yeah. Right? He was like the guy in the Tour de France who was like down 17 minutes the day before and then made up all 17 minutes. He's, he's, he's passing Lance going up the hill. Lance's like, wait a minute, I thought I was ahead of this. I, I, how could somebody be doping more than me? Oh this my is impossible. God. Don't worry, you'll find out. It's the burgers. <laughs> hey, he's John Senecal. I'm Brian Schack, and Matt Saroy's here with us as well. Okay, so let's put a rib, uh, ribbon on that one. Let's talk about the playoffs. I thought playoffs. We, we thought it'd be fun to just let's make our picks for the, the wildcard round. And I think that there are some people that are saying that this could end up being the most enjoyable playoffs ever because of the expansion. And let's face it, in my opinion, because the Guardians won the division, outside of maybe the Rays, I think all these teams are good. Yeah. Yeah. They're all really good so you, baseball teams. You made an interesting point, right? You said outside of the Rays, right? So you, you're not marking the Rays in the same category as the other three teams. I think in the Guardians first, and the Rays are the two weakest which teams. Which is interesting because me as a Yankee fan, I think the Rays is the last team I want to play in that division right. coming out of there. Because? It's something about that damn team. I don't know what it is. It, it's the thorn in the side of the It Yankees. is. I don't know what it is. So it's not rooted in logic. No. It's just, you know, I, well, you know, I mean, there's been history, right? It's, it's like the new Red Sox history, you know, that kind of stuff. I won't get into that. But I just feel like it, it's just something about that team that scares me. They make you nervous. Yeah. You know, but I, I don't think the, I don't think they're good enough to beat Cleveland. So I like the fact that hopefully we'll face Cleveland. I think we have a better shot, which is I'm crazy I said that because Cleveland is a very good team. But Cleveland's one of those things where your perception is perennially good, but they never good enough. Never good enough, exactly. Yeah. But the Rays scare me. The Ray, I don't know about – what do you think, Matt? I, I totally agree. I mean, playing them 19 times a year, too, you just know them better, and it, it just – it's scary. It's well, scary. what it's, what makes them scary, scary is that they are, they are truly, as a culture down there, unafraid. Yeah, right? and, and they, that, the Yankees have beat both of them in the series for the year. The Yankees were like 11-8 and eight against the Rays and I think 5-1 and one against the Indians. So, but, I mean, how much stock do you put in that? Wait, so you're picking the Guardians? I think the Guardians will beat the, the, Ray, the Rays. I disagree. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Rays, unfortunately. And just be sweating his ass off the next the next round. Yeah. I'll go I'll go with the Guardians because I like Francona and I do, don't like the Rays. And even though I think the Rays they are dangerous, but I I'm gonna. Go I honestly with that. think the Guardians are gonna just take two out of three right out the bat and just take them. All right, Phillies and the Cardinals. My best friend is a huge Cardinals fan. My uncle uh, idolized Stan Musial, 
and they are such a good baseball team. But I just I don't know. There's something I, I I'm so glad the Phillies fired Joe Girardi. Okay, that just made me happy. And so that team, and I think you know Har- Harper's fun. I really there's something about the Phillies I like. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Philly for no reason other than I'm just sort of sick of the Cardinals, and it'd be nice to see the Phillies go. I think the Cardinals. I mean, they're, they're obviously riding the wave. They're riding the Pujols wave. They're riding, you know, the, the everyone's leaving wave. The Molina, yeah, yeah. The whole the whole farewell tours. Um, I don't think they have the pitching to beat the Phillies. I think the Phillies have got a very good one-two punch with Wheeler and Nola. I mean, that's as good as you're going to get, especially in the National League. You know, um, I would take them on my team going one and two in a series. I still, I think the Phillies will beat. By the way. Nola helped me win fantasy. You know, I had a wire to wire win in our. What fantasy was the final on that? I didn't look. I know, you, I, I, it, must, it looked like it was going to be close. Yeah, but no, I pulled away late. So you are the you are the 2022 fantasy nice. champion with almost no trans. I had the least amount of transactions in yeah. the league, and I, mean, I just drafted. My son helped me draft. Yeah, and, he, and I remember like his first text to me after the draft was like, "I don't know about this team. I don't know, what I do you cr- think?" And I was I, like, oh, "You'll make need some more pitching." And I don't think you did anything. I don't think, I don't I think I you did, did really either. anything. You just let it roll. <laughs> That's true. Uh, who are you picking in the? Cardinals? I'm gonna look either really stupid. Stupid and really smart with you guys. Uh, like, Why? You're going I against think, the grain. I think the Cardinals are, are with Arenado and, and Goldschmidt. Those guys are just they're, they're good. Monsters. Yeah, I said I don't think they have the pitching, but you know, you you, you speak. I mean, those guys are bringing that. Yeah, the, the hitting is unreal. They're two of my favorite players too. I mean, Arenado is so fun. I mean, I, I, love I just think he's really good. So you are taking the cards? It's like a sweet story too. So with the Yachty yeah. and, and Pujols both leaving, I think they at least got Arenado I think, and Goldschmidt are two of the guys that go about their business. Yeah. Wow. You know how I love that. Yep, they, they <laughs> go about their business. <laughs> Pack a lunch. I what maybe the I think the next two series are actually the most interesting series. I think the Mariners against the Blue Jays. I th- I listen. I, I won't go first since since I've already gone first. I'll let you go first. You go Matt. first. Yeah. Um, I, I would love to see the Mariners win. Does that I, mean you're taking them? I, I don't think that they're gonna win. So then you're picking who? I'm picking the Blue Jays. Okay. I, th- I think the Blue Jays just have. Better pitching with Manoa and and better hitting. See, I I both plan. love and hate the Blue Jays. Like I just they yeah. the way they handled like I think it was uh, Pavetta the other night who came in tight, came in tight on, I believe it was Vlad or somebody and like two pitches later he hit him. Vlad's he took like him the in, biggest overreactor. But now. here's the thing, and then but the yeah. thing is, and then he no he went in tight on Bichette and then Bichette hit it out. And then and then and then and then Guerrero Jr. later hit it. Like they, they they're a little too cocky for me. Yeah. Like there's something about them, and I I think they're all great players, but there's something about the cockiness of those guys that I don't like. So I don't. I'm I'm just on pure storyline. I'm picking the Mariners. Yeah, I think I think it'd be a great storyline. The Mariners. I don't I don't know if I'm totally sold on the Mariners pitching with Ray. Yeah, and they're Gilbert. not as good a team. Um, no, I, I I think as far as. That series, I think the Blue Jays will come out on top based on the exact same reasons you guys talked about the hitting. And their pitching is very good with Manoa, Berrios, and Gaussman. Um, I don't think it'll be that order. I think Manoa will start, and then it'll be Gaussman. I think in the wild card, uh, that that first game is the most important game in that series. But the good thing about that is I feel like if the Blue Jays can sneak through there, I feel like they can knock out the Astros. I think they got a pretty good shot at beating the yeah. Astros. I really do. Who, who does? The Blue the Jays? Blue Jays. Yeah, really? I think they got a really good shot. I think they match up well against them. I think, obviously, the Astros pitching is is has been lights out, like, insane all year. But I do think the Blue Jays can match up and knock the Astros out. And this last one is amazing. What was the statistic you gave about how many days in the season the Mets were in first place? Oh, my God, it was like every the, the day. The Mets were 175 days in first place, and the, and the Braves were eight days in first yeah, place. Yeah, all but eight. It's incredible. Crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. And I think it's going the to— same thing happened, was it last year or the year? Yeah, I think it was last year, too. Yeah. I'm going to let you pick this. I'll, I'll just say, I'll lay it out. DeGrom and Scherzer, I think, are the best one-two punch in the playoffs. But maybe they're a little past their prime, but, or Scherzer is. I, I just—anyway, I'm going to let you go first. I don't. I don't. On paper, I think the Mets roll, right? But I don't. I'm not sold that Degrom and Scherzer are 100 percent healthy. I really am not sold. And there's been all these whispers about jerking up the rotation and moving Degrom and to a game three if they need him, and and just skipping them all together. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I mean, not pitching him in, in game it, two. Yeah, yeah, holding him and starting Scherzer. But I'm not even convinced that Scherzer's totally healthy because these guys have both come off an of injury, right? Hmm. And Degrom's got something with his blister or something. So you're taking the Padres. I think the Padres are going to shock them. I really do. I think the Padres can beat them. I think that's the one underdog I think that I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick them and pick the Padres. I hate to say it, but I think you're right. Because I, I like 
love Max Scherzer. I love Jacob DeGrom. You're right. That is the first best. I mean, look what the Atlanta just punch. did with him. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, Hugh Darvish is still a really good pitcher. He's pitching game one. And I think he has had an excellent. Yeah. Here, season. Here's the deal. I, think I San Diego is going to be too much. I like the Mets. And I like what Steve Cohen has done. They're, they're, I like it. And they won 101 games. I think that the mental part of the way they ended the season is going to be their death now. I think that I don't think they're going to win because I just think the karma is just is just gone. And 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 I I feel like the Padres. I mean, I, I this whole this whole Tatis Jr. thing like bothers me. Like the the way he's handled himself as a pro just bothers me so much. But he's not there. Right. So he's not a distraction. Yeah. They've moved on, and as of now. And I think Soto, I mean, listen, Soto's got World Series experience. He's got playoff experience, and he's young, and he is Soto. So I mean, hopefully he steps up, and we'll see. It's going to be interesting. I do feel like that's, that's the one upset I'm going to pick. I'll tell you one thing, though, ab- about the Mets. If they get bounced in the first round, what scares me is that Steve Cohen will go on a spending spree. How can yeah. he spend more? How can he spend knock, more? Knock, Aaron. I, I, that, that scares me. It scares me as a really? Yankee fan because I think if they get bounced out of the first round, he's gonna open up his checkbook like never before. What better way? Touch. We've talked about this. Like, what better way to stick it to the other team? In also, if you think of what they lack, I mean, it, Alonso has no protection. I mean, Lindor is a good hitter, but he doesn't yeah. hit for power. There's nobody else who really hits for power on that team. Yeah. So that would make a lot of sense. I just they're already the highest paid team in yeah. baseball. I mean, they don't Steve care. Cohen does not they don't care. care. That's another bridge to cross. We'll cross that one. Another day. See? Another day. We'll get into we'll get into the, will Aaron stay or will he leave? All right. So listen. So we, I hopefully will the series be wrapped up if we do late next week? I, I think maybe we'd be. Well, able the to. next the, the Yankees would play on Tuesday. That that would be the first game the of 11th, the yep. of, of the next series. Would be really Tuesday. that quickly? Yeah. Yeah. So the Yankees have six days. Well, five days now off. Um. But yeah, this wow. this first round goes until. I don't think that, it goes till Monday. I think it goes right till Sunday, right? Sunday night. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Straight That's really through. so. Yeah. Are they they don't even get a travel day. They get the one one team gets the travel day. They bounce. So there's four days, three games. Because you have Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today's, today's Thursday. Yeah, the games are tomorrow. No. Friday. Is it tomorrow? Yeah. Oh yeah. well, then maybe it is Monday then. Listen, this and podcast is supposed to be evergreen. Every time you do that, it will be a Tuesday <laughs> start and a Wednesday start. Okay. We're gonna end on that one of these days. <laughs> He will forget. He will remember to stop talking about these days. <laughs> Correct. He's John Senecal. I'm Brian Shackman. Matt Royce. This is Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in history.